be fine. I 
You know, it gets on your hands, and so you just wipe it on your clothes. Yeah. But isn't that what everybody does? Yeah. Or my face. I mean, the fine works. I thought it was fine real quick. Yeah, that's no problem. Right we could just do two letters. Or no, I don't know. We just do a couple things. I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Mine works. I thought with the risk of seeming a little right here, no, I don't mind, but it really helps me sometimes when I label my colors. So since we have a few extra minutes, um, if you want to, um, I'm just going to label. Tobias just gave you a fine Sharpie. There's also an ultra fine. I don't know if it's going to work. Mm. You can try the ultra fine. Mm. We did just spritz your palettes with turp, turpentine, so I don't know if the ultra fine will show. So I've got white. Um, this is light cad yellow. So if you want to abbreviate, I put L cad uh, Y. Oh yeah, it's not good. You get it on your right. Put it on your arm. On your arm. No, that's not what I thought. Oh wait. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, with the side. And then what? Light, what? Light, 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 Hey, no, you're fine. There's three spots here, there's one hey, spot. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Yeah. Glad to be out. Yeah. Very happy. Okay, next one is just cad yellow. And I know it's a subtle difference, but that'll make a difference when we're working from dark to light on these cad oranges and yellows in the highlight. It'll you'll see a step between that light cad and that regular cad yellow. Okay, and then we've got two piles of the same. Anybody have a guess what that is? Yep, it's cadmium orange. Okay. I just put caddo. So we've got white, light cad yellow, cad yellow, two piles of cad yellow, by the way, and cad orange. We've got two piles of cad yellow and two piles of cad orange because we're going to be mixing with them. So you can always like grab out of one, get it messy, and then still have some for other adventures. Mm. All right, we've also got two piles of this lovely brown. Anybody know what that main brown in oil painting is called? Guesses? It's okay. Oil brown. Burnt umber. Good. Burnt umber. I was gonna say that, but it looks awfully dark. Burnt umber. Burnt umber. Well. Are you thinking of the next brown, maybe? Well, that I have both. I have both at home in the acrylic. Mm -hmm. Oh, that might be because it's acrylic. Yeah. It might seem a little lighter. Yeah. So two piles of burn umber, and then we've got raw. Or excuse me, so I'll put my wrist kind of see in it. Is that device burnt sienna or raw? Okay. It was the big two. Okay, burnt sienna is the red brown. So whenever you think of red brown, think sienna. That's what they always call it. Then the umber is the brown brown. Next one is your good old black. And you also have a green there, so be careful which one's black and which one's green. That is a vermilion green, my very favorite green. Firm green. Yeah, you can write on the lip, or you can abbreviate. And this is just for you, so it's optional. All it does make sense. Yeah. <laughs> and you're gonna cover over some of this, you know, as you go. This was my palette from the other day. So you're gonna get it messy, but this will help you. All right. Then we've got four little supplementary smidge piles. We're just gonna use a smidge of those. 
Um, any guesses on what yellow that is? Ochre. Ochre, which is spelled O-C-H-R-E. And it's yellow ochre. And then we have a phthalo blue. Which is P-H-A... In the book, in the book I was reading the other day. P-H-A-T-H-O? Oh yeah, P-H-T-H-A-L-O. Thalo. Just L-O? A-L-O. A-L-O. P-H-T-H-A-L-O. Oh, yeah, that book is Say yeah. Well. yeah, let's do that. Um, oh, that's and then, uh, oh, you know what? We're going to need more of this purple. Thing. This little tiny dot is purple. Yeah, it's purple <laughs> and it's dioxin. That matters to you. And then we have alizarin crimson, which I call Al. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and mix our little custom colors. So let me give you a very brief intro to oil paint. And don't worry, if you've never oil painted or you're experienced oil painter, you're just going to go at your level and uh, you'll pick up stuff as you go. We try. No worries, no stress. You'll make it. It's okay. okay. Yep. And we're going to help each other if we get stuck or didn't hear something. And you have an extra palette and you also have some room inside here. Um, you're welcome to mix colors wherever you like to. You have a palette knife. You can use that to mix. It will help you save paint because you can kind of like wipe it um, off between colors. And then also between colors, you can simply wipe it with your paper towel. So that saves paint too, versus like a brush that you're having to like keep cleaning between colors. The oil paint, you never used it before. It is very, a lot stronger. Um, it's oil based. So the base of it is literally linseed oil. So if you've ever had an oil stain in your clothes, you know that it's no games, no jokes. So it does stain, so if anybody wants an apron or smock for their lap or anything, it's right there. Um, but in exchange for being a more difficult medium to work with, you get very rich, beautiful color. So, and it's very blendy, and you can do beautiful wet on wet techniques. So that's the awesome thing about oil, you have to deal with the messy up, a little bit of it, and then the sustainability, but that's no problem. Um, yeah, I was telling Tobias that it takes 75 years for oil painting to dry all the way, <laughs> or a week if you don't want it to physically rub off. <laughs> all right, so our first color we're going to mix is green mix. I'm going to call it green mix. And it's simply going to be your vermilion green and your black. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just grab a big chunk of vermilion and about an equal chunk of black. And I'm just going to mix those. We're going to be using that mix a couple times. So we need a big bunch of it. later, but that's a big chunk out of the way. All right. Um, while your palette knife is still dirty with your green mix, 
We also need some uh, green mix plus umber for our background. So go ahead and grab a big chunk of your umber and you can just kind of use... It's the best way to get all your paint off your... Um, you're just going to... Because it's kind of sticky. Yeah, she's got a big one here. A regular there one. There we go. Yeah. So you're just going to kind of smear to get and kind of use angles to get the paint off. So I just put a chunk of umber kind of next to my green mix. And I'm scooping a little bit over so that I have some umber green mix there next to my pure green mix. What you do? Sorry. Okay, so we've got green mix here, black and green, and then next to it I've got a big piece of umber with some green mix kind of moved over. So it's, it looks like one big patch, but I know that there's some umber in the area to the left. And if you want to label that for yourself, you can. What did you do? I was already in this. My tags are dead. Like oh. since this oh. week. <laughs> I, I will miss that. <laughs> <laughs> I have really big feet. Yep. <laughs> How the actual hell are you? You let it go or no? No. <laughs> You're like, since it was so old. Oh. You're like, bro, I'm gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I've been over here for days. Okay, now grab another piece of burn umber. And this time we're making our main hot color so we need a bunch of this so look how much umber I have we're just doing some pre-mixing so you haven't mixed this too much chunk of umber and this is my main color for my pot. I think I'm going to put it on my other palette. Um, and I yes. want this to be a little bit more viscous, which is a fancy word to say a little bit more fluid. So how can we make this more fluid? Yes. You add the oil or the turpentine. Good. So you've got two different mediums in front of you. You need to come sit next. You've got linseed oil, which you already learned is the base of the actual paint. So just like adding more water to lemonade, it makes it less sweet, right? So just like that, it's going to make it more fluid, but it's not really going to make it more transparent. It's just going to make it more oily and fluidy, okay? If you want it more transparent or to clean, what do you use? The turp, which is the clear stuff that you have in the little rammy. So, right. the oil's in my red one? Yes. Okay. And I did put a little teeny bit of turp into your oil, just so you know, because I like a little bit of turp in my oil to mix it up a little bit. That way, like, when I'm, I'm dipping into it, I'm getting a little bit of both, but it's mostly oil. Okay? So, with all that said, I don't have any rammies. You can dip into your oil and just add a little bit with your palette knife right into your umber. You said it's a burnt umber. Yep, got a chunk of burnt umber. Now I'm going to add a little bit of the purple. Remember I said that, oh, we need more purple? This is why. Because it's in the background. Excuse me, the pot color. How much purple? Just whatever. Good question. I did probably, I'm not even using all my umber right now, so I kind of did maybe a quarter purple to, I mean like a quarter purple to brown. So oh, this little inky thing right here? Oh yeah, I need some more oil on some pink one here. Oh snap. <laughs> yeah. I'm here, Sorry, I'm here. Guys. I'm like, what? You know, <laughs> 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 it just looks brown to me. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Now, you're going to, as the more you oil paint, the more you kind of feel when you need to dip into your medium. Um, so if you feel like your paint is not moving as much as you want it to when you're painting, if it seems dry, then, you know, feel free to dip into your oil with your palette knife or your brush and just kind of mix as you go to change the viscosity a little bit. Any more purple suit device? And I actually need um, cups. What color do you want it to look like again? I will show you. Brown. It's like brown with a purple edge to it. Okay, so when I scrape this color, you know I can see a little purple in it. Yep. Yep. So that's kind of the level you want. Like it's brown, but it's low key purple. So does everybody have enough purple? I think so. Does everybody have like a little leftover purple for later? Yep. Okay. A little more? Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Tobias. Yes. Yep. Can I have a purple? Yep. Yep, we got you. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Are you going to come to me this week? Maybe. I'm going to find out. I think she's on it. I just want to go back to see what I did. Yeah. So I did. Yeah. All right, while you have your palette knife dirty, I want you to do something for me. Over to the side of where you have your nice stuff ready there for your pot, just put a little of that leftover, and I want you to put, um, I just dipped my palette knife into my turp, and I want you to put a lot of turp in it, like a couple drips. In the purple? Yeah, look, I just put a, what was left over on my knife. <laughs> And what we're going to do with this is we're going to block out a very, very light diluted like starter shape. So we want it super diluted. So keep it in turp and a little bit of oil in there until it's juicy. Oh, now you can see the purple. Pinch it down, pinch yeah. It. Just and if it's too purple, knife, put a tad bit of brown. It's just a palette knife. Like you don't want it to be screaming purple. purple. You want it to be subtle. There's mine. And it probably needs a little bit more turf. Yeah. You can always add more though, as you're painting. Is mine too dark? Mm -hmm. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Oh, I'm glad I texted you. Me too, because I totally forgot. That's a big beard. <laughs> so while y'all are doing that, I just wanted to show you as a little overall oil painting tip. This is Wayne Tebow. I just picked this up at the Candy Wiley exhibit, but I just wanted to show you that even a white object has lots of juicy, amazing, crazy colors. So when you're painting your copper pot, you're going to be using all these crazy colors and it's going to turn out looking very expressive, but also picking up the real object. So just like Tebow, you're going to make something that's rich and that has like some hints of some color theory so some strange and unusual colors that you might not look at this pot and say wow we're gonna have like some pale blue in there and some beautiful like yellow ochre highlights but yes we're going to and then I want to show you one more example this is like a classic oil painting technique example because it has a couple different things that I just have to mention to you if we're going to do an oil painting. One thing is cool color shadows. Do you see how even though this is a white object, it has cool color shadows, so it's infused with a teeny bit of blue. 
That's exactly what we're going to do with our shadow on the inside of the pot. Mm -hmm. So same exact technique. Cool colors and shadows. Mm -hmm. And you don't need a lot, just a little bit. goes a long way with those cool colors because they're so strong. Um, Complementary colors also. So we always want to keep in mind the color wheel. If we use opposite colors, it tends to do really cool things. So for instance, this uh, rooster has some amazing reds that go against all that green. So red and green are like often used as a visual amazingness. Also yellow and purple, which probably more so in ours. Um, last thing I wanted to point out to you guys is local color. So reflected color or local color is, and you saw that in Tebow's as well, it's whenever you have an object next to another object. So this would be more prevalent if we had like a, a red pepper next to our copper pot in a still life. Then wouldn't it be cool if we had some splashes of red in our painting of our pot, like it was reflecting off of it. So, and I have a whole different lesson just about local reflected color and how fun it is. But that's what all this green is coming from, is reflected off of the ground, okay? All right, we've got two more custom colors to do, so wipe that palette knife. <laughs> All right, we've got our background color already, which is gonna be the green mix and umber that we already did, but we've also got what I call the funky background highlight color, okay? Does everybody see this funky color here? So this is the uh, green mix and burnt umber, that's your main one, and then we're gonna work into it with the funky color. So let's pre-mix that funky color. This is what it looks like on the palette. And it is cad yellow, cad orange, and that green mix. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scoop some of my green mix. And now that you know how, you can always make more if you run out of a mix. This is the first one you The first one we made. Grab some green mix. I'm over on my other palette, and I'm pushing that on to my palette. And then, uh, without contaminating too much, if you're scared of contamination, you can do a quick wipe. You can grab some cad yellow, just the regular cad yellow. I have a pretty good chunk of it. And I'm not mixing yet, I'm just squishing it onto the plate. And then I'm gonna grab some cad orange, a little less than the yellow, but still a good chunk. And you mix. So instead of like slabbing the whole green, the whole light into the dark, and this is good whenever you're mixing colors. Don't just slide it in there because what if there's way too much green mix, you yeah. know? Then you just be continually adding more and more yellow and orange. And then you have lots more than you probably need. So instead of doing that, why don't you mix your yellow and orange and then add a little green mix at a time until it's satisfying. So, ooh. Yeah, that's like really good right there, actually. This is like good baby puke. Oh, okay, there we go. Kind of. She said who about the time I said you. <laughs> thing there. Oh, that's beautiful. Is it like an olive? What was your question? Avocado colors. Yeah. yeah. For the first next year. Rotten avocado. Mm -hmm. Maybe we were very, very ripe one. Yeah, it looks like it's a lot of, well, the green mix is just the green and the brown. The, the umber, mm -hmm. the green and the black. Mm -hmm. There's, so, I asked you to do that. So this is just green and black, and then this is green, black, and brown. Okay. So I wanted you to grab a little of just the green, black for this. If you grab some of the umber one, it's not a huge deal. I just did make the green and black. Mm -hmm. Is that the gross color? Yeah. Mine's just kind of, I like mine. Oh 
army green. Like a yeah. <laughs> okay. Are we okay on their funky background highlight color? Yeah. That's your that's your black uh, that's your me green right there. You can Don't worry, we got plenty yeah. more. But you can add a little bit of yellow to that to a little bit brighter. I'm gonna grab all the colors and then if you need more, you just let me know. Because I see some people need some more yellow. Don't be shy. Uh, both those are kind of orange. Just grab out of one. They don't talk to me like that. They're the same two. There's two different cat yellows, though. Those are two different brands. Don't tell them I've seen this. Just kidding. Excuse me, it's my fault. I'm sorry. All right, one more color, and then we can start. OMG. This is our pot. Highlight, parentheses, inner rim. So it's got a couple different things in it. It's this. That bluish color. Yeah. So it's white. So grab a little white. It's mostly white. And then I'm wiping. And then a teeny bit. I'm saying teeny smidge. If you don't trust yourself, just. Have somebody else do it. No, just, 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 just don't do it. Just don't. A little teeny bit of thalo. The blue. You can always get more. Put it in the way. And remember, we learned that we don't just smush it all in there. We work a little at a time. Because look how dark that is. Mm -hmm. That's too I dark. I barely touched it. See, I knew I got too much. I barely touched it. Halo blue is amazing. It's a beautiful color. Um, here. I really just want a tinted white, so I went okay, way too dark. Right. Okay. So I just started, I wiped my knife, and I started with just a little, and I got it this time better. What's your, oh boy, wow. Yeah. I did this Try again if you, a little whiter. If you mess up, try again. Like, uh, think Mm -hmm. perfect. And then I put a teeny smidge of purple, like teeny bit, like even less than a blue. And maybe don't do that in the whole bit, just make yourself a little purpley version too for some variety. have like an icy blue and an icy purpley blue. Oh, here's what I have. That was even darker. Yeah. Oh, good. Okay. If you messed up, try again. Try it again. Mm -hmm. And where did you add the purple to? Just like a little section that has a little purple in it. So like save some of your pure blue. Mm -hmm. You guys are doing an awesome day. I did Water. Yeah. Anybody else need water? Yeah, it goes to the Like to drink. No, I'm good. I don't know. Would you like one, Anthony? One thing I think. Yeah, that's good. We always do. I think I already did a bottle where I can actually. Yeah, I think I'm like that. All right, guys. We're ready to start. Big brush. 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 Okay, I want you to dip it in the turf. So now it's soaked in turpentine. Okay, and I want you to grab just a teeny bit of burnt umber. Plain burnt umber? Plain burnt umber. And it's so watery right now. I need some of well, turf. Yeah. <laughs> turpentine, but it's clear. So look. Can't even barely hold it up because it's going to drip. Yeah, so, sorry. 
All right, now we're just gonna else. do a wash. But I want it super light, like I even want it lighter than that. So I'm gonna get a little bit more turf on my brush. Do the number. Like I want it turpy enough to see through. Oh, I grabbed the wrong brown. But <laughs> not so turpy that it's dripping. So if it's like just starting to drip, that's good. But if it's dripping everywhere, then we can't have that. So get a little bit more paint if that's happening. more paint? Another plate? Yep. No, I need the right color. <laughs> <laughs> you might wash it off. Mine's gonna look and if you need like anything at any time, just ask, guys. Mir Tobias will get it for you. <laughs> if you went on and you wipe it with a too dark, towel? you can wipe it. You can wipe it with a paper towel oh, yeah. and then you can try again with more turf and spread it out. Do the right color. Yeah, I kind of like... So I'm using those 
push down bristles to help me edge up so I don't get a jaggedy edge. So just keep layering to get it more and more correct. Okay, it's not gonna be perfect out the jump. And remember, or you might not know, so you wanna use end of your brush when you're oil painting as much as you can. If you're just starting oil painting, you might have a tendency to choke up on your brush and be working like this. Mm -hmm. But unless you're doing like a very tight detail, 95% of the time you want to choke back on it and that actually encourages you to be more painterly and more accurate because you're using more of your more of your arm. I know like when I first started it seemed very awkward to do that because I was so used to like tight control of drawing but I promise if you try it you will find benefits. Okay so let's block in the little bottom uh, base So to me, it kind of just looks like if we simplified it a little bit, it's kind of three bulbous rims. So I'm just going to kind of block in the curve of them. And if you want to start really light like this, like I just had a little paint on my brush, if you're starting a new area that you're not sure about, start really light and then keep dipping to get darker once you're more sure of yourself. Like I feel like I did it too big. So since I was really diluted, I can just dab it away and try again. The only thing that's bothering me is the pot is so dark. <laughs> Your pot is so dark? No, the bottom of that pot, like the lighting. Oh. So I'm like, can you hear? Yeah. I don't know exactly where it is. I see what you're saying. did print some references for you because I realized not everybody has the best view and plus if you're just starting it helps to have a 2D reference as well. So I did photograph the bowl and the painting so if you need to refer to that up close there's a printed copy there for you. And I feel like I'm doing the same thing I did with that which is a little heavy on the left so I'm trying to make it more centered. How's everybody doing with the shape? Pretty good? I am big. Big is okay. Huh? Big is good. And you can also twist sometimes to get an edge. Like I'm twisting to get the little edge of my little round. I'm twisting to get that. to um, like squint your eyes so they're unfocused and check your proportions because then that'll help you separate it from what it's supposed to be and just look at the shape for a sec. Oh, you don't see this?
Does that give you anything? Yes? Yes. Does that give you all some? Or did it just lose it? Wow. That's <gasps> good. You still the have interior. an interior? Did it mess you guys <laughs> That's up too much? Mine was leaning around. Uh, I just changed the angle a little. Yeah. Those were just in the Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Is that yes. better? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay, so make <laughs> your brush even have more turpentine on it. So dip into your turpentine so you just have like all turpentine with just a teeny bit of paint. And I want you to do a wash. Don't make it too drippy like I just did. Over the whole left side of your bowl. for our highlight so when we start laying in those yellows and oranges it'll have a teeny bit of that brown purple in there to blend with but it won't be too much so you might be wondering why purple because uh, I read when I first started researching how to paint copper that copper shadows have purple in them in real life so that's why we add the purple to the body. Okay, so I kind of ended it on a slant because um, I'm kind of following this template of your reference just because it's the most basic, but if yours is a little different, this is your highlight area. So wherever the light's hitting your bowl, the brightest. Okay, when you're ready, you're going to dip your brush, we finally get to use regular paint, into the purple brown, so no turf, and we're gonna start building in our darks. You said what color again? So this is still the purple brown. And when we're actually painting the colors of our pot, um, you want to kind of use a lot of dabbing. Um, it helps to give it that copper texture. So we're dabbing in. I feel like mine is a little too purple right now, so I'm going to dip into my umber. Down on your base. So 
so just kind of like a line, line, line to start building those darks. So I just kind of did bands on the three base rim shapes down there. With the dark, with the dark. And remember guys, this is not photorealism that we're doing. This is al prima from life or wet or wet. It's an Italian style. So a little bit of generalization is expected and encouraged. That's what's gonna give it that fresh look. So don't worry if like things are left a little rough or painterly or like you have a big band of, of brown or big, big stroke highlight, like that's what you want. So don't feel like it's, you know, a stroke is like rudimentary. Like we're gonna build up our strokes. So don't worry. So I've got three dark bands here on the base. I've got my dark here on the right. Let's do just a teeny bit of dab of blending into our highlighted area. Right there at the transition. Whenever you have a transition, you're gonna layer, right? But you wanna kinda transition each layer. So just like when you're blending with colored pencils, I don't know if you've ever done that before, but you feather one over the other, back and forth, back and forth. We're gonna do the same thing between our dark browns slash purple and our oranges and yellows. So this is our transition area and we wanna feather that the whole time, even starting from this base layer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that way you're not fighting a sudden sharp curve as you're layering. What if my lining is different from your lining? I do it like my way or do you still so like good question I'd say do it whatever you're comfortable with okay. whatever you want to try tonight because I realize that there's this and then there's this and then there's this so whichever you want to try okay thank you mm -hmm. I just try to give you options I know not every seat is optimal okay let's work in a little bit of sienna who remembers what that is? The light brown. Or light, well, it's the red brown. Red brown. Okay. So I'm going to wipe my brush on my paper towel, still using the medium. We're going to use this medium for most of this. And I'm, I'm just going to dip my brush in my medium, not my turf, my medium. And I just the load oil. it up. Yep, the oil. I'm going to call that medium because it's kind of a mix of both. And the turp you really only use like for this initial blackout stage and then for thinning and cleaning. You're gonna use your medium most of the time. Yeah, like okay, like so I kind of worked some sienna onto my brush and I'm just gonna work this sienna in, I think it's over, I can see, right in this mid-tone area. And since we're working wet on wet, you're gonna have to continually wipe your brush to load more paint on your brush. Um, this is called carrying. So sometimes you'll notice when you're working wet on wet that the paint won't carry. That's because it's picking it up from your brush. So that's okay. It's expected. You just got to get more paint. But if you don't wipe your brush, you're, you've got burnt umber on your brush now. So don't worry about the wasted paint. It's just part of it. So wipe more burnt sienna until you've got like a nice little reddish type middle tone there. You can feather it a little bit, teeny bit into your highlight too. So I'm kind of using like short little strokes all different directions. I'm trying not to get too much like sponge looking texture. I'm trying to get like brush texture. So it looks cool. I'm getting a little bit more and working with your pick up my brush is too wet. It's too wet? Yeah, it's picking up the paint off the <coughs> Did you try wiping it and get more paint? Yeah. Did you put too much oil in it maybe? Yeah, I did. Okay. Do you need more burnt sienna? No, I'm good. Okay. Just can't see the keys. It does? And got to keep working it. It's going to happen. So I put a teeny bit 
bit of the burnt sienna on my rim, kind of as a middle highlight, just the start of it. It's already looking a little coppery. <laughs> So this kind of stroke, see I was choking up because I had a detailed pull like area to do. Now I'm going back to the end of my brush and I'm going to get expressive again. So I'm dipping in my orange again and now I'm doing some more dabbing. Now don't 
dab all the way up because you don't want to take away your under rim shadow. So do you see that little dark area I left there? And if you paint it over yours, you can cut it back in. But that little bit of umber is important underneath that rim. Because that's what's going to look like that rim has dimension and is casting a shadow. Okay, now when I get to my transition area, that's a little bit more important. So I'm going to blend a little bit more. So a little bit more dabbing into my sienna and my umber there. And I like the texture that I'm getting. And I'm keeping it on a curve shape. Okay, we still need some orange in our base highlight area. So I'm going to do three kind of stripes. Can you go over the transition area again, please? Sure. So basically, you just want to make sure that instead of ending like on a line, mm -hmm like dab, 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 dab in a vertical. You just want to make sure you're curving out with your dabbing. And you're going to have more layers, but just kind of start it. Okay, with the orange though? With the orange, work it into that burnt sienna okay. that you laid in there. Okay. And if you start getting more orange than you want, you can always go back in with a little bit more sienna. Okay, cool. <laughs> Are we doing okay, guys? Any Wonderful. questions? Water is very refreshing. <laughs> <laughs> Good. There's more bottled water so if anybody needs one. Yeah, the thing that's bothering me, yeah. The thing that's bothering me is ours is totally different like our angle and where the shadows are. Yeah. So I want to look at yours, but I'm like, wait, it's not. Yeah. Mine. <laughs> so you're like, if you're doing your own yeah. It, you're translating a little bit more, so it is a little bit harder, but it'd be great for you. Okay, when you're ready, guys, go ahead and get wipe off your brush and start your next value, which is going to be your CAD yellow. Um, it might be nice if you know your brush is not going to be completely clean. So you could kind of do, like, allow just a teeny bit of orange to mix in. So this is like a cad yellow orange. So if you want that just to be an extra step in your value, right, we're doing orange then yellow. So if you want it in between orange and yellow, that's fine. And that's kind of a blessed, blessed part about oil painting is you naturally get value steps that you don't always get with acrylic because it's already dry by the time you're trying to get another color. So for the yellow, I'm doing a little bit tighter now. I'm kind of picking where I want my highlight. I'm just gonna kind of go with the same kind of area I did on the example. But if your highlight, you wanna do it in a different area where it's slightly more towards the middle, wherever you wanna do it, start working it in. Dab, dab, dab. Which yellow is that? Uh, it's like, it's mostly cad yellow, but I had a teeny bit of orange left on my brush, so it's got a little orange in it. So I'm just working, big highlight area. And this is where it starts to become more important to think about every brush stroke because you're going to start to see some of these brush strokes are going to be your final brush strokes. Not all of them. We still got more layers, but just keep that in mind that you want to start being happy with your brush strokes because they might show in the end. So did you see how I kind of did like a little bit of happy, expressive, like X shapes? my paint strokes.
forget, whatever you do up top, you should do a little splash of it in your rims, in your base rims, base, whatever they are. Lips. Alright, everybody alright? 
So let's wait Probably. to put like the pale yellow until the very end. So let's go ahead and put our rim in. So we want to put our rim in with a uh, cat orange. Let's go back to your cat orange. Be like a teeny bit of burnt umber in it, like just barely touch it to the burnt umber once you have orange on it. And put a little, dip it in the medium. So I dipped in orange, teeny bit of umber, and medium. This is what I got. Orange, teeny bit of umber, and medium. And look, I have a pretty tight point. I'm going to dip in the medium one more time because I'm about to do the rim. So if you want to see, I'll try to make it so everybody can see. So when you're doing something like this, you can choke up. Or you can try far away too. Um, I kind of use a combination of both. And I'm going to kind of root my brush and then I'm going to pull across. More coats, that's totally fine. Try if you're gonna mess up, try to mess up high than low because you put in that nice high, uh, dark already under and it's pretty developed under here, but we haven't done up above it yet, so we can cover that with that dark we're about to do. So if you gotta mess up, go up. And I'm gonna kind of start with a little bit of orange curved up to the top rim. You see how I did this right here? Just a little bit. On the other side too. Should probably switch to my small brush, but I'm not going to. A struggle, so no worries if it's being difficult. You'll get it. Speaker die cat. Yeah. Did you find that charger? Mm -hmm. That's pretty mm -hmm. well, charger. Well, then you can leave things on the Yeah. I was gonna say that. Everybody do okay on their rim? We're done. <laughs> Maybe just use a little bit more liberal use of paint, like really like dip and yeah, blotch it on. Mm -hmm. Looks good though. Guys, those look amazing. Super proud of you right now. <laughs> Really cool, 
Yeah, we put you in. Yeah. Oh, you don't see me. You don't see me. You go to Germana? Oh, no. Not this semester. Are you taking a break? You're just not going back. Okay, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and skip to the background to lay in our first coat because then if um, we need to, we can do touch ups. Just trust me, it'll be good. So, backgrounds next. So, let's go to our big brush again. This is fun. It's really fun. All right. Anybody remember what we're using for background? Green mix. Yes, the green mix with the umber in it. Okay. So I'm gonna dip my big brush into my oil and just a teeny bit of turf, mostly oil, just to kind of get it going. And then I'm gonna go ahead and load up with my green mix plus umber. And I'm going to start on the left, or you can start wherever. I'm sorry. And you're just going to block in everywhere. Okay? Now, when you get close to your pot, it's really not that hard as it might seem. You're just going to push, push and get nearer and nearer to your pot as you pull and just whenever you get comfortable you just go right along the edge of your pot see how I'm doing push I'm pushing looks more green and then I'm keeping my brush kind of pressured so that it has a nice tight edge and I'm fixing any little problems along the way. So let me just show you. So this was my first big background stroke. So I haven't cut in yet. I just did what was comfortable. And I pushed and then I pulled along that edge with a big brush to try to sorry, cut in. So I'm gonna cut into the little stuff in a minute. I'm gonna do the big edges first. So you push and slowly pull along your pot. And this is good to kind of have far back on your brush. I know it seems like it'd be good to choke up, but this is good to have back farther. Um, if you want it to look a little artsier, don't go all the way to the edge. Leave an artsy edge. Or you can go all the way to the edge if you want. If you run out of color, you know how to make more. Green, black, with some umber. Let me know if you need more out of the bottle. So I'm just taking a little section at a time. Push. Slowly cut in, just like painting the trim at the house. You've done this. So I need tape. I do too. I'm not gonna lie. I'm horrible. My dad's like, free it. You got it. Yeah. I swear, I like pulling the tape though. <laughs> <laughs> when you're done. See how crisp I am. Now, I don't know if you're happy with like your mix, but I'm pretty happy with this mix. I can just barely see like a tinge of green in it, you know, but it's pretty dark. You want it to be dark, because we're gonna go in with the funky one, remember? To, to lighten it up. So, all the way to the edge. That is up to you. If you wanna leave an artsy, unpainted edge, you can. If you would prefer it all the way to the edge, you can do that as well. Um, don't paint inside your bowl, you know, in your background up here, along your upper rim. 
like that. And if you have to supplement with a smaller brush, you can. running out of paint so I was getting dry brush edge which I need a crisp solid edge so make sure that you load up your brush if you're doing a cut in area if you got to mix more paint remember to switch back to your palette knife Enough paint so that you're not getting too much brush stroke. 
transition period, so you're getting a little bit more feature. I'm using my smaller brush and cutting in around my base to finish my background. Anybody have any other big background problems that we need to figure out? Are we okay? Thank you. 
careful. My uh, paint that I just had on my brush was a little too turpy, so it was uh, a little drippy. So I've got to fix it. So you call it out a little more. Yeah, I'm like cutting in to clean up the orange edge. And then you just paint the whole yeah, thing. Just fix this. <laughs> yeah, the whole inside. And I'm just leaving, like, I'm not painting over my rim, I'm painting up to my rim, though. Like I said, if you're scared, then start higher. Cut in higher and then work your way down. Yeah, that's not bad. 
add that little bit of white to transition to the red front side of the rim right here. And I'm going to do a little bit on this side too. So this is pure white. Can I see that? Yes. your way up at the top of that blue area that's fine too. Might need your small brush, I'm struggling with the medium.
awesome to finish off the inside of the pot. Wipe your brush and just do a teeny bit, watch me, teeny bit of cat orange on the other side of the highlight. And that'll just give it like a like it's copper under there, it's just in shadow. So just a teeny hint of the orange over here on the opposite side of your highlight. Just work it in a little. Bye. Bye. Yeah. Is there more orange yeah. 
Yeah. You know what? I'll grab this one. Uh, you got one? Yeah. Yeah. Here we go, guys. Here's another palette. So we try to do. So I'm just doing another little coat of dark over here, and it doesn't have to be full coverage. Kind of like so many things. I'm just I I think that the dark side looks like more of a first coat, and I want to bring it to uh, a little bit more texture and a little bit more solid, like our left side. So I'm just using the umber and purple to build up another layer. And I want to retouch the under rim shadow under here because I kind of lost mine a little bit. So I'm building that in as well. Yeah. And then so I'm just dabbing into on my medium just like we did before. medium value, not my medium oil. <laughs> now, do you see the difference here, guys? Look where I've gone and done another coat versus where I haven't yet. Do you see how it's the same? It's the same color, it's just more saturated. We just needed to bring this side to the same saturation level as all this that we worked so beautifully. You see what I mean, guys? This is where I haven't hit yet with another coat, and this is where I have. So it just brings this side to that side as far as coverage. So it's still the same color, okay, still the umber and purple. So this is where I haven't done on that edge, and this is where I have done another oh, yeah, coat. And I've pulled, I pulled back under the rim, guys. It's important to have that dramatic under rim shadow. And if you're like me, I lost mine. Like it was there but it looked not saturated and not, not like boom, boom, pow. Isn't that purple and that umber amazing though? I just love that. Mine's a little dry too, so I'm just dipping my brush in medium as I go. And if you need to add like a little bit more of the sienna, to blend it into the middle, you can. I'm gonna scoop a little extra dark up on the left underside too. Oh, fun. Now remember, when you're blending into your medium values, your strokes are now gonna show. You're on your final coat, so make sure they're cool strokes and that you think about each stroke. Just use a teeny bit of that, of that purple, or it'll overpower the alizarin. Yeah. 
This one looks so good. Okay. Have you done the highlight in your background? But I have not. Green? Okay, I was just curious. That's our last step. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I know. So guys, I wanted you to notice one thing I did. I mentioned it, but I don't know if you heard. I scooped my dark up this side a little bit. Did you see that? Mm -hmm. And that gives a little bit extra dimension and also helps with the round effect. And it gives contrast to your brights. Contrast, contrast, contrast. Difference between lights and darks is what makes things interesting to look at. base here just working in my darks and a little bit of orange to blend didn't wash my brush or anything just dabbing a little in okay now I have one more little secret trick about the right side and that is your cad red It looks like this. Did we yeah. get cad reds? I wonder. Yes. Yeah, a little tiny. Yeah. 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 No, that's a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. hold on. So Keep going. I'll give you some. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm glad, though, because you might have mistaked it for an orange.
trail over there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the cat red is for our little bit of reflective color. So we're going to use the cad red in the right side. And we just need a teeny smidge of this. Mm -hmm. Right here. 